Do you want to be healthier, yet you just don't know what to do? All these shows telling you this and that, but nothing seems to work. Well, listen close. Golden State Media Concepts has got something great for you. The health and wellness podcast dedicated to workout trends, healthy eating habits, diet, and everything about healthy living. Join us in our banters as we help you not just live life to the fullest, but live it to the healthiest. Hey guys, and welcome to GSMC Health and Wellness Podcast, brought to you by the GSMC Podcast Network. I am your host, Cynthia. Happy Tuesday, everybody. I hope we're all, you guys are, you know, doing well. What is it now, like day eight, nine of quarantine, depending where you're at? I don't know. I don't know what day, you know. It's like a very long weekend. Do you guys remember before all this happened, we were always wishing that, oh, I wish the weekend were longer and, you know, I had more time to do this. And it's like, well, now we have all the time in the world and it's like a weekend every day. Every day feels like a Sunday to me. So, um, but I hope you guys are all hanging in there and partaking in activities that you love, staying productive. And I have so much to share with you guys on today's episode, um, Managing anxiety and stress during the coronavirus uh, situation. So I'm going to tell you guys a little story time before we get into some tactics on how to cope with anxiety and stress during this time. Uh, so yesterday or two days ago, what day? Yesterday, yesterday. See, I don't know. I don't even know what day we're in. So Sunday, that's definitely not yesterday, <laughs> Sunday, um, I was sitting on my laptop and I'm on this Facebook group for my job um, at the gym where I was working at. And as we all know, all gyms and fitness centers are closed. And the owner says that he might have to uh, permanently close the gym again because we're not getting any revenue because no members, you know, are coming into the gym. So he says that we might, I mean, we might. We might lose our jobs and that's not, you know, that's not his fault. We're not mad. But after reading that news, all of a sudden I started feeling palpitations really strong in my chest and I felt tightness and I was short of breath and I started feeling very lightheaded and dizzy. I couldn't even stand. So I was literally like laying on the bathroom floor you know, because the, I have tile in my house and like the tile was cold. So like that felt good against my skin, but I had the chill. So like my feet were sweating, but I was cold. And then the scariest part for me was that my entire right arm went numb and I couldn't even like move my fingers. And I like felt tingling, like this weird tingling sensation all down my right arm. And this is all happening all at once. You feel me? So it's like tightness in the chest. I, I feel like I'm shortness of breath, numbness and tingling in my right side, chills, all of this stuff happening at once. It was the most uncomfortable and scariest experience. And my initial thought, you know, I'm thinking coronavirus because of the tightness and the chest and the shortness of breath. So my mom took me to urgent care and luckily no one was in there. We went at a very um, non-popular time, very slow time. And I was able to be seen right away. You know, they did tests, EKG to check my heartbeat, checked my blood pressure multiple times. And luckily, not coronavirus. I am coronavirus free. Thank God. But what I, what the, all of those symptoms were, I was experiencing a panic attack, which I've never, ever, ever in my life ever experienced a panic attack before. And that's why I was feeling every single symptom that I felt 
those are all symptoms of a panic attack. So like almost feeling like you, you know, you can't breathe. You're being choked, the tingling, numbing in either your hands or your feet. So all of that is our symptoms and signs of a panic attack. So that's what I was experiencing. It lasted about like 20 ish minutes. I'd say it felt longer than that though. Like it, I felt way longer than 20 minutes and I got diagnosed. My trigger, let me go back. So my trigger for the attack was me reading the news that I p- could potentially be losing my job because the owner might have to, uh, might be forced to close down the gym. So that was a trigger for me, me not knowing, right? Because again, I've never experienced anything like this in my life. And panic attacks can either be triggered or they can literally just come out of the blue. If you are somebody who deals with anxiety and you, or you have experienced a panic attack, then you would, you know what I'm talking about. There doesn't always need to be a trigger, but in this case, mine happened to be, you know, reading that news that I might lose my job. And you know, this is happening. There's so many cases of this happening right now. Um, you know, with the coronavirus, it's it's a frightening time we're living in. We're in the midst of a worldwide pandemic with cities and even entire countries shutting down. Some of us are in areas that have already been affected by coronavirus. Others are bracing for what may come. And all of us are watching the headlines and news and wondering what is going to happen next. So the uncertainty surrounding the virus is the hardest thing to handle, I think. There's just a, like, we're in the unknown right now. We don't know how exactly we'll be impacted or how bad things might get. And that makes it all too easy to, um, you know, just overwhelm ourselves and spiral a little bit, um, in our heads and just feel like overwhelming dread and panic, which, that's how I've been feeling throughout, you know, this whole pandemic. I've been re- watching the news obsessively. I've been, you know, friends are sending me, you know, all these like celebrities who have this and have that. And, like I, I'm just constantly getting bombarded and I feel like most of my conversations right now are regarding the virus. So I think me not really knowing that was all affecting me. And my anxiety. So I got diagnosed with generalized anxiety uh, on Sunday. And that's why I think it's really important to talk about how to manage anxiety and stress during, you know, coronavirus. Because if you're listening to this right now and I just told you my experience Sunday morning and you are someone who's panicking a lot or there's an immense anxiety, fear, stress in your life right now due to the virus, then please listen to today's episode. I'm going to be sharing with you guys uh, tips on, you know, how to deal and cope with anxiety and stress during this time and things that, you know, things to just help support you and the people around you. And I'm here with you. I'm here. You know, we're all going through it and just hang tight, everybody, okay? Um, but I also know another factor of immense anxiety, why it's like haunting me is, you know, people are losing their jobs, businesses are closing, the economy, economy is plummeting right now. And all of these things are extremely stressful factors for everyone, including myself. You know, I lost my job, uh, so it is what it is. I know we'll get through this. Um, just trying to trying to stay positive and not let my emotions get the best of me because at the same time, I found out due to my immense anxiety and stress that I've been experiencing throughout these last few months, it has also affected another part of my health that I'm not, don't really want to share right now, maybe in the future, but not right now. So I just want to emphasize how important it is to just take care of your mental health, your emotional uh, health as well. Like all of those things are just as vital as taking care of your physical health. Right now I've been seeing, you know, so many workout videos on Instagram and Twitter of like people showing their audience um, workout 
routines and regimens that you can do from home and people being super creative with the weights they're using, which is all great. Like I've even created, um, you know, home workouts and I've shared it with my followers. So definitely not knocking it down. I think that's like a really, um, great way to help all of us stay motivated. But I think it's also, we need to, uh, place an immense amount of importance on your mental and emotional health during this crisis we're dealing with right now, just because it is a lot and the emotions can't get the best of us during this time. And I, I mean, I just experienced it. So that's why I wanted to talk about this matter today, right now. So there are ways that we can manage our anxiety and fears. And I'm going to start getting into all that right after this quick commercial break. Are you looking to learn more about the latest trends from the fitness world? Are you confused by all of the different trends that are out there? The GSMC Fitness Podcast is the place for you. The GSMC Fitness Podcast is the place to come for people of all skill and interest levels. Join us as we explore the latest trends in the fitness world. Does that new exercise really work? Should I try yoga? Whatever your question, chances are good you'll find an answer on the GSMC Fitness Podcast. Hello and welcome back to GSMC Health and Wellness Podcast. And let's get straight into how to manage our anxiety and stress during this time. So I want to start off first with listing uh, some of the people who may respond more strongly to the stress of a crisis. And these include, you know, the elderly. They are the people who are the um, group of people who are most vulnerable to the virus, um, and just other individuals with chronic diseases who are at a higher risk for coronavirus, uh, children and teens as well. I mean, many, if you have a child, um, I don't even know what you could, what you might say to your kid as to why they're not going to school right now. Why are they being homeschooled? Why are their soccer practices being canceled? So especially if you have little ones, um, I'm not sure how you're doing it. So I want to know, actually, let me know in the comments how you are coping with all of this, how your child is coping with all of this, because some may, you know, be able to understand what's going on. Others may not. So I'm not too sure how children um, are coping. And let's see, people who, you know, are helping and with the response to coronavirus, such as doctors and other healthcare providers or like first responders, right? So they can also um, respond very strongly uh, to the stress of this crisis. People who have mental health conditions, including problems with substance abuse. So people with pre-existing mental illness conditions like anxiety, depression, all of that stuff can definitely just like trigger um, one's mental health and heighten it. Stress during an infectious disease outbreak can also include fear and worry about your own health and the health of your loved ones, uh, changes in sleep or eating patterns, difficulty sleeping or concentrating, worsening of chronic health problems that you may already have, and increased use of alcohol, tobacco, or other drugs, which that one, I noticed when I went to all these stores, first of all, toilet paper, gone. Bread, eggs, gone. Um, dumbbells are even gone, which is good because that means people are working out at home. But also what are, what's like empty on the shelves, all the booze. So a lot of people are, you know, kicking back at home, drinking, which is fine. But just again, all in moderation, making sure that we don't go overboard during this time. Um, especially since we're like not on a schedule, you know, it's like your days just kind of all mashed up. So, Definitely stress can um, increase alcohol and other substance substances. 
And let's now get into things you can do to support yourself or someone in your life who seems very stressed and unease, uneasy about this whole situation. You can maybe, you know, share these tips with them as well. So I think the most important tip that I want to share on how to manage your anxiety and stress during this time, and this is like the very first thing that I did wrong, stay informed about what's going on, but don't obsessively check the news like I did, okay? It's vital to stay informed, particularly about what's happening in your community, so you can follow advice, safety precautions, and do your part to slow the spread of the virus. But there's a lot of misinformation going around as well, Um, you know, as just like there's a lot of people covering the pandemic and that feeds into our fear so it's important to be discerning about what you read and watch like a lot of times when i'm scrolling on twitter i see people just like type things into their notes like in their phone and just paste it and then like that just gets like a trillion like okay not a trillion that's like excessive but it gets thousands of like retweets and likes and like people start freaking out like people just type things in their notes saying like oh like my my aunt who knows this person who's in the pentagon like said this and like it's typed in their notes on their phone like do not take that is not a reliable source people stick to trustworthy sources such as the cdc the world health organization and your local public health authorities those are the three sources I would truly trust. And I learned my lesson. I'm not going to be informed by what Twitter's telling me or by what influencers is posting on their page. I'm literally only going to be checking the CDC and the World Health Organization and my local public health authority for the latest coronavirus updates. And I urge you to do the same as well. If, you know, just like don't, checking all these like different avenues and different coverage of the virus and limit limit how often you check for updates because constant monitor monitoring of uh news and social media feeds can quickly turn compulsive and counterproductive fueling anxiety rather than easing it which that's exactly how i felt because i'm like it's just i'm again i'm constantly being bombarded with all of this talk about coronavirus and then this this city's on lockdown this country's on lockdown this is how many cases have you know increased and like it's just a lot in such a short amount of time so it definitely has fueled my anxiety and heightened it mind you i already had it prior to all of this but i think this just kind of pushed it over the edge for me personally which is how i got the panic attack um and so, yeah, just limit how often you check for your updates. And the limit is different for everyone. So just pay attention to how you're feeling and adjust accordingly. If you feel like literally stressing you out, take a step away. Step away from social media if you start feeling overwhelmed. If anxiety is an ongoing issue for you, consider limiting your media consumption to a specific time frame and time of day. Maybe you could do like 30 minutes each evening at 6 p.m. So for 30 minutes every day, you have those 30 minutes to check on the, you know, what are the latest updates on the virus. Once those 30 minutes are up, boom, shut it off. Luckily, with the iPhone, we now have like a timer on there. I think it's like your screen time. So you can like put, I'm only going to be on Instagram for three hours this day. And once you're on for three hours, it like locks you out of it. So you can do something like that. Like for me, I'm going to put a time, um, restrict my time on both Instagram and on Twitter. Again, just so I'm not like bombarded with so much information all at once. And another point, ask someone reliable to share important updates if you'd feel better avoiding the media entirely, if you're like, I just like don't want to watch TV, I don't want to be on social media, like I don't want to partake in any of that, then ask someone you trust to pass along any major updates you need to know about. So, and lastly, just be careful what you share. Again, this goes back to my whole Twitter thing. Like, do not share a post that some random dude or girl made on their phone or like the notes on their phone and share that. Do your best to verify information before passing it on. Okay. 
We all need to do our part to avoid spreading rumors and creating unnecessary panic because that just like freaks everybody out and we don't need panic right now. We need to all just like come together, be zen. That's what I'm trying to do, trying to take deep breaths and just keep my mind on other things and not just on the virus. My next point on how to manage anxiety and stress during the virus. Focus on things that you can control. This is another one that I need to get, you know, learn, get it together. We're in a time of massive upheaval, right? And there's so many things outside of our control, including how long is the pandemic going to last? How are other people going to behave? And what's going to happen in our communities? That's a tough thing to accept. And so many of us respond by endlessly searching the internet for answers and thinking over all the different scenarios that might happen, you know, all those what ifs. No, 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 no. Don't do that to yourself. As long as we're focusing on questions with unknowable answers and circumstances outside of our personal control, this strategy will get us nowhere. Aside from feeling drained, anxious, overwhelmed and scared so when you feel yourself getting caught up in fear of what might happen try to shift your focus to things you can control for example you you can't control how severe the virus outbreak is in your city or town but you can take steps to reduce your own personal risk and the risk you'll unknowingly spread it to others such as just do your part Wash your hands frequently, avoid touching your face, staying home as much as possible and practicing social distancing. Super, super important. Everybody's been talking about social distancing, you know, just be in your home, stay at home to limit the spread of the virus, right? And I'm going to cut into another very, very brief break. When we come back, I'll share with you guys more tips on how to manage and cope with anxiety and stress during coronavirus. Tired of searching the vast jungle of podcasts? Now listen close and hear this out. There's a podcast network that covers just about everything that you've been searching. The Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network is here. Nothing less than a podcast bliss with endless hours of podcast coverage. From news, sports, music, fashion, cooking, entertainment, fantasy, football, and so much more. So stop lurking around and go straight out to the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. Guaranteed to fill that podcast itch. Whatever it may be, visit us at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter and download us on iTunes, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Hello and welcome back to GSMC Health and Wellness Podcast. Here's my next tactic or step, tip, whatever you want to call it, on how to manage your anxiety and stress during this time. Stay connected even when physically isolated. (sighs) This is another that was tough for me. Like all of these things that I'm listing, these are things that I consulted with my doctor and things that I'm trying to implement in my life from here on out. You know, we as humans, we're social animals. We are hardwired for connection. Isolation and loneliness can exacerbate anxiety and depression and even impact our physical health. That's why it's important to stay connected as best as we can and reach out for support when we need it, even as we cut back on in-person socializing. I mean, also, thank God for the time we're living in right now. We have all of these different... um you know, social media outlets that we can connect with other people. We have video chat, uh, live stream. We have phone calls, texting, Skype. Like 
so there's a lot of, uh, you know, amazing tools out there to help us stay connected with other individuals, even during this time of isolation. So again, I urge you all make it a priority to stay in touch with your friends and family. If you tend to withdraw when depressed or anxious, think about scheduling regular phone calls or chats or Skype dates to counteract that tendency. And while in-person visits are limited, you know, substitute video chatting if you're able to. Um, so just there, social media can be such a powerful tool and not only for connecting with friends and family and acquaintances, but also for feeling connected in a greater sense to our communities, our country, the world. It just reminds us, you know, that we're not alone. We're all going through this. We're all on the struggle bus here. You feel me? So just stay connected. Try not to completely isolate yourself from like the entire world. Again, we're lucky that we have social media during this time and age. Um, but with all of that being said, be mindful also of how social media is making you feel. Kind of going back to my previous point. Um, if you are feeling immense anxiety or stress because we're again being bombarded with all this stuff about the virus, like, don't hesitate to mute keywords or people who are exacerbating your anxiety and log off if it's just making you feel worse. But if there's like a couple accounts or people you follow, um, that are just like constantly talking about the virus and giving you updates. And again, it's exacerbating your anxiety and stress. Block them temporarily or indefinitely up to you. Um, or like mute them. I know on Twitter you can mute people, which is like, pretty great because you absolutely forget that these people even exist which is kind of crazy um so yeah there's there's ways just again stay in tune with your body what is your body telling you do you feel stressed like do you literally feel your heart pounding all of those things so just take into consideration how your physical body is feeling and take a break if you know it's making if social media is making it worse and don't Super important again, I mentioned this a little bit already, but do not let coronavirus dominate every conversation. I know we've been talking about it a lot here at the GSMC Health and Wellness Podcast, but again, it's all hopefully helpful and useful information for you. Again, I'm not here either to exacerbate your anxiety or stress. I'm not here to, you know make matters worse for you i'm here just as a helpful tool so i hope you guys do view this podcast in that way and as i was saying i'm like what was i saying <laughs> don't let the virus dominate every conversation it's important to take breaks from stressful thoughts about the pandemic to simply just enjoy life enjoy each other's company to laugh share stories and focus on other things going on in our lives like we do not yes we do need to take it seriously and yes we need to take the um necessary precautions so we don't spread it but let's also enjoy the time that we have at home you know like try to be productive do things that make you happy, which this is all going to go into or lead into my next point here of just taking care of your body and spirit, you know, like literally exercise, take deep breaths, stretch, meditate, eat healthy, well-balanced meals, get plenty of sleep, try to avoid alcohol or drugs if you are feeling already immense anxiety and stress. Um, just, but yeah, all of these things, you're being kind to yourself. You're being kind to your body when you're taking care of your physical well-being and your mental and emotional well-being. So that's actually another activity that I'll be partaking in as well. My doctor uh, suggested to me to start doing yoga to help me relax, which I will be doing tonight. I think yoga is going to help me a lot at night before I go to bed. Just kind of uh, put my mind at ease, you know, from everything I've just been consuming throughout the day. So I will be doing yoga starting tonight to help again, like just like very meditative and just go easy on yourself. People, if you're experiencing more depression or anxiety than usual, you're not alone in your struggles. I'm here. Let's connect comment in the section. You know, that's what we have the comment section for you guys. And I think another key component to just, 
again, dealing with all of this stress and anxiety is maintaining a routine as best as you can. Even if we're stuck at home, it's so important to try to stick, you know, to a regular sleep schedule, school, meal, or work schedule. This, all of this can just help us maintain a sense of normalcy during this crazy time right now. So I've been some, I've, this is something I've been implementing as well. It's like I, I'll wake up at eight. I'll try to go to bed by like midnight. I know some of you are like, what? It's midnight, but it's like from midnight to eight. That's still eight hours of sleep for me. So it works for me. I used to have to wake up at like five, six in the morning, but since my gym is closed, I don't need to do all that, but I still want to wake up early, uh, be productive, stay productive throughout the day and just get a head start. I love mornings. Like I prefer morning. No, I don't prefer, but if you were to ask me if I'm like an early worm or like a night owl, I'm definitely like an early worm. Is that even the right? Is that what people say? I don't know. I might be saying it wrong, but I am a morning person for sure. I love my mornings. I love my morning routine. Um, and I just think your morning routine is so essential to how you just go about your day, how your attitude is carried on throughout the day. Because if you just kind of get up, you wake up and the first thing you look at is your phone. It's like you're checking in on other people. You're checking in on the, the rest of the world before you check in on yourself and that to me is like I can't do that for literally my mental well-being so I I guess I'll share with you guys my quick morning routine here so I wake up I drink coffee of course which also if you're dealing with like a lot of anxiety my doctor did say to reduce my caffeine consumption which I've been trying to do I used to drink two cups of coffee per day but I am now only drinking one um, but still, if you are like dealing with a lot of anxiety or stress, try to cut out caffeine as much as possible. I'm working on it too. I'm not perfect. Anyway, my morning routine really quick. Wake up. Um, I drink coffee. I write in my gratitude journal for five minutes, which really helps, helps me feel a lot more positive. Um, and it helps me stay po- positive during this time. So I'll write in my gratitude journal and then I will work out. And then I shower and then I just kind of continue on my day. So in a nutshell, that's my morning routine. Uh, so super important. And uh, next thing to help manage and cope with anxiety and stress, take time out for activities you enjoy, such as reading a good book, watching comedy skits, playing fun board games, playing Uno. I know Uno can be intense with family members, but Uno could be a great idea or make something, try new recipes in the kitchen or do a craft. Um, it doesn't matter what you do. Okay. As long as it takes you out of your worries and just like helps you shift your focus into something good, makes you feel good, then do it. So that was another issue for me is that my stress or how I dealt with my stress prior to the pandemic was going to the gym. And yeah, I've been working out at home. I've been doing my home workouts, but the level of intensity is just not the same as going to the gym. And my regular gym goers, you know what I mean by that? Like you can still get a really great, amazing, sweaty workout at home, but just like the intensity level just due to equipment um, is not going to be the same as what it would be in the gym, like lifting heavy stuff with the barbells and, you know, there's more vast array of equipment. So that was another big thing. Like not only was that my place to train, but that was really my stress reliever. That was really how I got all of my negative emotions. That was through lifting heavy. So now that I don't really have that right now, I think that also just heightened my anxiety and as a result leading to the panic attack. So just engage in things that you love to do. Read. I'm, I'm reading more. I'm listening to a lot more podcasts. I'm listening, listening to soothing music. Just trying to partake in things to help me feel zen, help me feel good during this time. Um, and just also like getting out in nature, like sunshine and fresh air will do you good. So I've been walking in my dog around my neighborhood. Um, but still be sure to avoid crowds if you are going out and like going on a trail or something. Keep your distance from people you encounter and obey the restrictions in your area. So, yes, go outside, get some fresh air. We need the vitamin D. It's good for our skin. But just 
keep your distance. We're, we're still keep practicing that social distance, okay? And yeah, just again, take up like relaxation practices when you are feeling really nervous, like feel like a nervous breakdown coming, um, you know, deep breathing, meditation, yoga can bring you back into a state of equilibrium. So just taking up relaxation practices on a regular basis will deliver the greatest benefits, I think. Um, so see if you could set aside even a little time every day to just breathe nice and easy, practice mindfulness for like five to 10 minutes a day. Um, so I think that's going to wrap up today's episode here at the GSMC Health and Wellness Podcast. I hope that everything I share with you guys was valuable. And I hope if you are listening to this and you are dealing with anxiety such as myself, um, again, just know that you are not alone. We are all in this together. If you do want to reach out to me, please hit me through the comment section. I do check that regularly. So comment anything you'd like. I'll respond. Um, you know, I, again, like I said, I'm trying to stay connected, even though we're all physically isolated. We are social animals. I'm a social animal. I'm an extrovert as well. So this is, has been a very hard, um, you know, it's been hard for me to adapt to this new normal, but I know it's temporary and this isn't going to last forever. So that's kind of what helps me keep pushing. Uh, but just again, like I said, focus on things you can control. Don't obsessively watch the news, partake in things that you love to do that make you feel good. Uh, go outside, get some sun, just stay productive, be creative. You know, like I said, we're all going through this raw on the struggle bus, but let's, it's important to be here for each other. Okay. So on that note, I want to thank you all so much for tuning in to today's episode here at the GSMC Health and Wellness Podcast. If you liked what I had to cover today, please don't forget to like, share, subscribe, comment, all of that good stuff, and catch me here next week at the GSMC Health and Wellness Podcast. Wishing you all a happy and healthy week. Stay safe, stay clean, and keep your social distance. Bye. You've been listening to the Golden State Media Concepts Health and Wellness Podcast, part of the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. You can find this show and others like it at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Download our podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Just type in GSMC to find all the shows from the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network from movies to music, from sports to entertainment, and even weird news. You can also follow us on Twitter and on Facebook. Thank you, and we hope you have enjoyed today's program.